guys, how's it going? Welcome to this week's recap video. It's beautiful outside today. We had a cold front move through a couple of days ago. It brought some pretty severe winds. Like, I think it was clocking in, what, like 78 miles an hour just down yeah, the road from I, us? Yeah, I don't think it got maybe that, although we did have a big branch that we broke. We did. I thought, in fact, I posted a little snippet of the storm. It didn't last for, you know, all night long or anything. It was pretty short. Um, but I posted a clip of it on Instagram and I just said, but we didn't lose any trees, which we yeah. technically didn't. Um, but we did lose what a 10 inch diameter branch out of the mulberry yeah. tree, which is like losing a small tree in, in yeah. and of itself. Just that one branch, um, natural tree already came and they took were care so of fast. It. I called them up. In fact, I thought I was going to leave a message for them. I called them like way after hours and they're like, hi, Aaron. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so they just, you know, after storms, it's really important and they know they just prioritize all storm damage mm -hmm. um, and move it up to the top of their list over like, you know, just regular removals and cleanups and stuff. Because if you've got a 10 inch branch dangling from a tree right over a main mm -hmm. uh, driveway, that's not safe for anybody. And so they they really do. Uh, move through those kind of kinds of projects really quickly but anyway it brought in cooler temperatures i don't know what it is right now but like it's glorious like it's if, perfection yeah we had during a fire the, out here last night yeah and you can like feel fall in the air during the summer well in like the middle of winter like the dead of winter those are the times we we're kind of like now why do we live here again yeah but like now is like oh man this is why we live here yeah it's awesome we do get four distinct seasons here yeah. that's for sure Okay, so we are going to jump right into the first video from last week, which was the big houseplant haul, several unusual varieties. So uh, we'd been recently back, like I think it was the next day or something after we got back from the Grand Garden Show. Maybe it was two days after, I can't remember. Um, but I was feeling inspired to get some fresh plants after that garden show, and it was still really hot. Like the day after we got home, it was what, 105? Yeah. It was really hot and so I thought, well, I want new plants, but I, I don't really want to go outside and plant anything. I knew the garden center just recently received a gorgeous load of house plants with some uh, varieties I've never had before. So we went down and picked some out and then I just showed them to you and re we repotted them all and put them in the Hartley. So Katie said, your mom brings in the most beautiful house plants. Whoa, <laughs> my goodness. Um, how are you not able to bring them all home? Well, let me tell you. <laughs> Me and house plants, and I think I explained this, maybe not in that video, but in lots of videos. I think I burned myself out on house plants because I was in charge of them for years down at the garden center. I ordered them, I displayed them, I took care of them, and after a certain amount of time, like house plants are just much more fussy than plants outside for the most part. And I don't know, I just got my fill. But when we get in some unusual varieties that I never saw, even during the years I was doing that, that's when it gets me really excited and I want to try them out. Plus, it's so fun putting stuff in the Hartley, you guys, like really adding some warmth and some green in there. I'm loving it. Uh, Shirley said, I truly love your plant selection. Where do you buy your metal topiary cloches for your pots? Oh, all over the place. Um, so I had a couple, I have a few li little ones in the Hartley. I got those at Far West Landscape. I don't know, there was no brand on them. It was just a price tag. I get a lot down at my parents' garden center. I do get some from Gardener's Supply. Um, and then just when I'm out and about, like when I'm at antique stores, things like that, I keep my eye open for things like that. Where's Russell? Oh, he's right there. I thought maybe he might be right behind me. And here comes Cheddar. He's walking up right now. Cheddar isn't quite as lovey as, as Russell is. No. Cheddar got stuck in the barn last night. Oh, did he? That's kind of perfect. He's got food and water in there and a comfy place to sleep. Yeah. But I was watering the barn pots this morning and I, I heard him in there. Sarah said, when you pot up plants one pot size bigger, what is the general rule of thumb for that? An inch bigger in diameter? Usually it's like if you're, hold on, there's an airplane. So usually if you're going from like, let's say an eight inch size pot, you'll usually bump up to a 10 inch size pot. So what's that two inch diameter? Um, one inch on either side, that's typically what you'll do. Or if you're going from a two inch pot, you'll usually go to a four inch pot. I don't know that they actually even, well, some brands might sell them in odd sizes, but usually you see them in two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, you know, so on. Uh, DVG 30 is 20 said, where did you purchase the black two tier plant stand? I got that from Gardener's Supply. In fact, they sent that out and I think it's called the lattice plant stand and you can get it with or without the black trays that I have on that. Um, the black trays, I figured I would go with that so that if I didn't have or didn't want to put saucers under everything that I put on that stand, it could kind of act as a saucer and protect my floor. But the stand itself, and I've actually thought maybe I should take those trays off 
since all of those plants do have saucers because it's a really pretty lattice design. Um, and it's actually, th is it three tier or two tier? I wanna say it's three tier. Yeah, I think it is actually a three tier and it's three pieces. So you can get it in a corner section, uh, which is on either side of the straight section that I have. So it's the one straight section enveloped by the two corner sections. Um, so it all can be pieced together however you wanna do it. Uh, but Gardener's Supply sent that out to us right after the Hartley was constructed last year. So it's taken a year for me to actually get it, like put it in use. And it's just perfect in there, I love it. Kathy said, what about growing some herbs on the table? probably should do that. That would be a really great place to uh, have some fresh herbs. In fact, I'm just now starting to kind of gear up, planted some tomatoes um, this last week from seed and took some cuttings and got those rooting, rooted, rooting, whatever, um, because I do want to have some production or experiment with more uh, food production, herb production, that kind of thing throughout the cold months now that we have some spaces that will have some heat in them. Ellen said, I love the houseplant haul videos. Thanks. Uh, question, the plant that is prone to spider mites, is it beneficial to spray them in advance just to prevent a spider mite issue? Does that work? Yeah, preventative spraying is a good idea and it's something that, oh man. We're gonna have to do next year. Oh. Well, in the same way we've been doing it with budworms for the last couple of years. Yeah. It's like, you know it's a problem. We're just gonna have to do a weekly. But the problem is, it's easy with budworms because it's like you only have so many annuals, mm -hmm. but we have more and more extensive gardens now, which means we're going to have to be spraying a lot. So far, a knock on wood, the spider mites haven't been a huge problem out in the South Garden yet like because it's brand new development. It's kind of like squash bugs. They well, don't find your crop the first year. They'll find it the next year. By the way, did I tell you that uh, the guy's going to come out next spring to do the beneficials for spider mites? Oh, so is he going to bring the drone and release them that way? Or well, do you just like... Yeah, I mean, I, the drone might be overkill. I told him it'd be kind of fun yeah. to do the drone, but um, you can shake them out through mm -hmm. out your garden, I guess. And it, uh, it's like a beneficial spider mite. Like, it's or a, predatory. a predatory mite. So they, they their prey is the bad mites. Yeah, and I asked him, I was like, uh, is there any negative thing he's like we haven't like the only thing they feast on are the other mites so and then once they once they've eaten them all they just go away because they, there's no they more they food. go looking for food um they that's what they do in the hops fields around here because hops which are hops behind the greenhouse have spider mites and they do every year uh hops are incredibly prone to it and we have hops fields all over this valley uh, so yeah, they say that those beneficial mites are really awesome. And so it would be great if we could not have to preventative spray and not have to defense spray either. Yeah. Like if we could get away from doing as much spraying as possible. Yeah. Well, probably I mean, it would be cheaper too, to do the beneficial mites well, yeah. as opposed to spraying. Yeah. They also do like, um, he said, lacewing and, um, ladybugs. Okay. So I feel like we should just... Release them all. Release, release well, the hounds. My parents' garden center uh, sells ladybugs, but they're in like a pretty small bag. Yeah. Aphids haven't been an enormous problem for us, thankfully. I mean, they are a little bit of a problem, but they're so easy to get rid of. Um, but it would be nice just to have all kinds of different things in here. And I'm noticing more and more activity. Maybe that's why we have more and more spider mite activity because we have more and more stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, we have got, but we've got a lot of good stuff too. You know, I've been noticing, I saw a few monarchs here, lots of swallowtails, hummingbirds like crazy, and just all kinds of other things. So it's just, it's fun to see that activity kind of start to uh, amplify a bit. But anyway, in answer to your question, when you're bringing something inside, that's why I inspect everything before it comes inside. I make sure it's clean. If you want to spray things preventatively, definitely a good idea. I don't know how long the residual is on something like a Captain Jack's dead bug, but at least, you know, if you missed something, you know, you may catch it with a spray instead of accidentally bringing it in. Private person said, uh, love the plant stand. Does the Hartley have an automatic window washing system or double strength glass in case of large hail? Um, they have, is it self-cleaning glass, uh -huh. so is that right? But the thing about it, we really, we were really considering getting that because it's so, you know, dirty. <laughs> you know, there's so much, I mean, not only our own dust that we've created, but once we have all of our gardens set and everything, it won't be us creating the dust so much as it is the whole, the area at large. Like, we're very heavily agricultural in this area. There's fields everywhere, farm fields, and it's just a dusty area. You get big winds that come through and the whole... It looks like fog mm -hmm. almost has descended on the valley. You just can't see anything because it's just a big dust ball. Um, so we thought of doing the self-cleaning glass, but it has a look to it. Like in certain lights, right? It kind of looks like kinda reflective sunglasses kinda almost. Kind of blue. Yeah. Like, like a, a blue tint. Yeah, a muted version of, a, of those tinted sunglasses, mm -hmm. which I don't prefer. And I didn't really want to have that look on the Hartley. I wanted it to look clear, like clear glass and 
not have any kind of a weird reflection or anything. Um, double strength glass. I looked it up on the website. Oh, you did? I can read it. Okay. It says uh, glass, ground glass greenhouses use a toughened safety glass to protect from potential damage. Uh, this type of glass has endured an extreme heat treating and cooling process to increase its strength. This differs from standard 3 millimeter horticulture glass, which is the lowest type of glass that can technically be used for a glass greenhouse. Horticulture glass is thinner and prone to breakage, making it particularly fragile. At Hartley Botanic, our glass greenhouses are made from 4 millimeter toughened safety glass. The heat strengthening, uh, strengthening endure, uh, ensures that if broken, it does not splinter, making it safer to use in gardens. So there you go. There you go. Okay, next video was planting a pine, roses, and perennials. So I had some new there, the Ringo double pink, and then I had a Macedonian, no, yeah, Pacific blue Macedonian pine. And then I had, I'm trying to remember some asters. Was that all I had? Nope, asters came later. I did the Harlequin blue pincushion flowers and the Biakovo geraniums. Bonnie said, just bought a knockout rose. The leaves are full of holes. Did I just contribute to the nursery's retirement or do I have a hope to be able to produce flowers for next year? It should be fine. As long as you give it, you know, the water that it needs and it has a chance to root in, you really can't or don't judge the plant, I guess, by its first year's performance in the ground, especially if you bought it late and you planted it when it was hot. Um, they're just going to kind of maybe even shock a little bit, struggle a little bit um, to get going. And usually the second year is when it's really nice. I definitely would hit it with some rose tone fertilizer though early in the spring. Usually we do like March-ish mm -hmm. application when they start to break dormancy. And then we do another um, application like June-ish. Yeah, baby. Lynn said, great video from ground cover. Have you tried snow on the mountain? I think it may be called Bishop's Weed. No, I haven't kind of on purpose. So uh, she goes on to say she's loving it in her garden. I might like, uh, it might look great in that spot where your hostas aren't doing so great. I have the variegated and it spreads fast. That's one of the reasons why I don't have it. Great ground cover, grows well in any soil and like sun to shade. It looks so woodsy and magical, which I have to agree with that. It does have a very soft, very pleasant look. My parents have a huge stand of it. It runs underneath a kind of hedge of spring snow crab apple trees. It's really beautiful. It's very shaded right there. They also have the white variegated a variety, but I don't have it because it just, I think it's one of those things my parents kind of wish they didn't have because it's hard to keep it at bay. Like if you have an area where you just like want to let things kind of roll and do their thing, which, you know, we all have little spaces like that. I think for the most part, um, there's spots where you just don't want to have to mess with something um, and you want some no fuss plants in that area. Definitely is a good choice for that sort of area. Um, but yeah, I haven't, I haven't ventured into that, but I could get some starts real easy if we wanted to ever plant any of that, Erin. Uh, Lori said, how did I not see any video from last year from when you were at Mackinac Island? I caught it easy this year. Last year, I didn't see anything. It's because I think they canceled it last year, right? And the yeah, year before. Yeah, they had like, um, they had a version of it. Um, but remember you recorded that video? Like you recorded a, some type of video that played? I did. Yeah, they asked you to record a little video, played on a screen. Jack did one, um, a few other people, but it was like 30 people or less oh, that showed really? up. Yeah, it wasn't like a regular Grand I Garden show. I didn't even remember <clears throat> that from I, a year yeah, ago. I think they just did it. I don't know why they did it, actually. Because <laughs> like everybody kind of canceled everything for the last couple of years. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, a couple people went, I guess. Yeah. I guess being on the island, though, even if there wasn't a show, in fact... We talked about it when we were there, how it would be like, it's awesome to be there and be able to see some of the gardens because they don't open them up on a regular basis mm -hmm. or ever, except for the garden show. So you wouldn't be able to get this, you wouldn't be able to see those on a regular day, uh, but it would be really fun to just be, I don't know, on the island for no, no reason. Sure. Just to be able to relax and enjoy the, the scenery and the views. And it's just a beautiful place. Uh, Monty said, I've noticed that you don't seem to put as much starter fertilizer in the holes as you used to. Is there a reason? I've never measured the starter fertilizer, so I'm not sure. Have I been metering it out yeah, slower? Yeah, maybe you've been going scotch. Um, I guess. I don't know. I don't know, Monty. <laughs> I don't know. Ruth says, can we get the plants you say are for next year? You know, sometimes. Sometimes they release them online for early sale, like in the fall. And it may be a production thing. I'm not really sure, but it could be because some of the crops are easier to grow and they might have you know, had a really easy time growing one of these new brand new plants and they've got extras and they want to sell them. Um, you know, a lot of shrubs, it takes a lot longer. So you'll start to see those show up. 
the year they're released, usually at independent garden centers first. Sometimes it's hit and miss because you're kind of subject to what your growers, because I come from the garden center background where we don't grow our own stuff, we get them from growers. So you're subject to whatever the grower has available. And sometimes it takes a while for those growers to get on board. Um, so that's why if there's things that you are really interested in, talk to your local garden center so that they can talk to the growers so that the growers have these names like in their mind when they go to order all of their stuff to grow on for the year. Oh, there's so many hands sometimes that yeah. things go through. Um, but yeah, sometimes you can get them a little bit early. Sometimes you got to wait. Usually it's a couple seasons after they're released where you start to see them kind of in more mass quantities. Leroy said, is there anything Laura doesn't like? You know, there are a few things, but I think most of the time it's be, like conditional on the climate, mm -hmm. like magnolias. There's so many people who buy, like when I worked down at the garden center, they would sell out the magnolias wood because you see these gorgeous pictures of these big, beautiful magnolia trees and they grow here. Um, but every time they bloom, we always get a cold snap, always. They and bloom those, way too early here. Yeah. Yeah. We always get kind of a fall spring. So February warms up really nicely and makes everything bud out. And then we get like nailed with a late frost or not even a late frost. It's like a yeah. normal time for things to be that cold, but usually those blooms are out and looking awesome. And then they get snapped by that frost and then they look brown. They look like globs of wet brown tissue paper hanging in the trees and it's so gross. It looks like such a mess to me. It's something I probably would never put in my garden. Fall mums, uh, just because it's on the brain, I've been seeing a lot of them. I like mums for their color and when they're at peak, but they're only at peak for like two weeks and then they're done. And we have a really long fall season. So I only usually use those if I intend on replacing them halfway through the season, which I'm okay doing in a couple containers but I don't use them throughout a lot of my stuff because they just aren't performing plants. They're performing like for a very brief moment. What do you think about yuccas? I like, <laughs> I like the yuccas. Erin doesn't like the yuccas. They look, um, well, the ones well, that we have just look terrible to me. You can't judge yuccas by my treatment of our yuccas. I still need to groom those. I forgot to do it when, I, when we moved those urns. Um, so I need to groom them up and I think you'll like them a lot better. Do you think? I think so. But you don't like or you tend to not like things that look especially dry yeah. or... I don't like things that look like they could be dead. <laughs> you don't like blue fescue grass. I do know that. No, I don't. But you like totem pole panicum. I do. That one looks alive to me. It looks like wispy and... That's um, a statement. Yeah, it's a grass. statement grass. I'm trying to think if there's any other plants that I just don't care for. There's certain trees that, um, like oak trees, that really bother you losing their leaves. Oh, yeah. I don't like it. At but the wrong time of year. There again, like I like them during the season when they're green and beautiful. But I don't like them holding on to their leaves. I actually don't love knockout roses. Mm. <laughs> Those kinds of things. I think it was maybe just things I saw sold in sheer quantity. Like huge massive amounts of these plants being sold. So you see them everywhere. It's kind of like I know a lot of people don't like daylilies because you see them in parking lots. They're a parking lot plant. Or like a mall plant. Mm -hmm. Mall flower bed plant. Yeah. So that's how you see them. It's just... Yeah, it's one of those things. I saw so many of those red knockout roses being sold, and then I see them everywhere. And I'm like, mm. Sure. You just kind of get tired, I guess, of seeing it. It's right. not the plant itself. It's just the application or the, the amount. I don't know. Yeah. But, you know, it goes in and out. I might love it next year. I don't know. Depends on the, the time for me. Bluebell said, I never saw peonies in your garden. Is it a bad climate for them? No, it's actually really good. And I do have one, two, three, four, five, six... Uh, seven. I have at least 10, probably 10 to 15. I have to really think and, and look around. I love to add more though. The nice part about peonies here is that they're rarely afflicted by powdery mildew, which I know is a huge issue when you're growing peonies because, you know, they just tend to attract that. And we have such a dry climate that they usually fly through without being afflicted with that. Karen said, what are all the plants in pots by the back fence? So we have a section back there. Most of what's left back there our boxwoods that are going to be planted around the Hartley. I uh, thought we were going to be done with the Hartley project way earlier. I should just not plan, like never order plants until the project's ready. Well, you didn't want to miss out. You yeah, know, it was the spring. That. I think um, some of our plans evolved and you didn't, you know, because missing out is like a very real thing. It is. If you don't yeah. get a hold of plants, sometimes you go back to try to order them and They're there aren't available. any more to order. Yeah. Uh, the last two years have been like that with, mm -hmm. with COVID. Yeah. It's like, nurseries just didn't have stock of anything right so i have like 225 boxwoods sitting out there <laughs> right now we've been watering them every single day since april yeah and i'm 
thinking because we're about ready to show you I've got some furniture coming for the area back by the kitchen entrance where we did the brickwork and the stone walls it's gorgeous we're going to show it to you here really soon it should be here I'm guessing next week mm. I kind of wanted to show you with it all kind of like put together and we have a little cleanup work to do yet because you know they put that like uh, polymeric sand and they brush that between the bricks and then you you know blow off the excess and then water it down and it binds the, the stuff together but it does leave a kind of a film like mm -hmm. a powdery film and we need to get that cleaned off and then maybe put a sealer down to kind of help richen up the colors which is something I may do inside the Hartley as well um, but anyway just a couple of steps left to show you that but I'm guessing they're going to be starting on this Hartley area this next week hopefully yeah we've got everything flagged um, so we've walked it out and really talked through the flow of the area I think it's going to be awesome uh, planting new 2023 roses Japanese maple and beauty bush plus elderberries Oh, that's a weird title. Yeah. I, re I read that, I think, wrong. Planting new 2023 roses, Japanese maple, and a beauty bush. So those were all new for 2023, plus elderberries, which were just an older variety. So lemony lace elderberries, planted three of those. They look awesome. Planted some Jolene Jolene beauty bush, which are new for next year. A Japanese maple called Metamorphosa. Metamorphosa? I think it's, well, it might be. Leviosa. Metam yeah, metam <laughs> Metamorphosa. 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 metamorphosa i don't know or anyway metamorph it's pretty and it's in a container it's doing well and i also planted the crema reminiscent crema roses which oh they're so pretty danelle said i know you give away plenty of plants that don't fit your space at the moment even with your parents owning a garden center and you receiving trial slash promotional plants have you ever given any away and instantly regretted it it would be hard for me to have to start over with something smaller if i previously had something more established and could instantly fill a space I don't think I've regretted any plants we've given away. They're always going to good homes, you know? We have friends and family come over and dig what they want and take it home, and I've never, I've never once regretted giving plants to somebody. There's one thing I have, the only regret here was taking out the fence between the Hartley and that back garden before I was ready to. I wish that fence was still there a little bit. Mm -hmm. Maybe in the end, I'll probably be thankful that we just like, went with it. I felt a little bit pushed into doing that before I was ready. Who pushed to, to, you? <laughs> I'm not, not going to name any names, but it's are just... They, are they sitting in this area right now? I'm not, I'm not no comment. Um, but in the end, you know, most of the time I'm like, you know, that was good. We, I'm glad that we went ahead and did it. But yeah. there's that painful process in between when you're trying to figure out what to do with the space. Now we have a little bit more direction with this space and, you know, we are taking the boxwoods out, which I think, I think that that was probably my biggest thing. And I don't know that you should let something in a space drag you down that much to where you can't even like, it doesn't work. The boxwoods don't work back there. They're awesome, awesome in and of themselves, mm -hmm. but you take them and put them in that space. They over, they are so big. It just takes over that space. It's way too big. And when they were initially planted, probably didn't look that big. But I think in the end, like you really have to think about mature sizes or how how much you're going to actually trim something mm -hmm. before you put something in place and that area I just I couldn't get past those boxwoods because I and usually I don't have a hard time ripping stuff out but I, I have had a, had hard, a time hard time with, with that. that because there's been an element of that garden that has been a, like a tiny bit nice in that I hardly after ever have to go back there mm -hmm. and that's been a little bit of a peaceful I hadn't loved it though that's mm -hmm. the thing like I'm very conflicted about that space back there but I think it's going to be like I can actually see from where I'm sitting, I can see right back to the uh, sensation box elder tree that's right behind the boxwood hedge. That's going to be where the vista is, and you're going to be able to see it from here too. Mm -hmm. That's going to be neat. Yeah, I didn't realize that until right now. It's going to be good, um, but no, no regrets on plants. You? Do you have any? No. Yeah. Do you have any regrets on anything we've done around no, here? No, I'm I'm like a huge fan of progress, like yeah. changing things, and I never look back and cry over spilt milk. Never. I'm always wanting to move forward. Is there I, any? I never look back. Is there anything infrastructure-wise? I mean, kind of moving into a different subject, but like something Do you, you know, wish you would have done. Yeah, my only regrets are not moving fast enough. Like when I, when, if I look back, I'm like, man, uh. if we could have planted more trees sooner. Like I look back at that now as the North Garden. Yeah. We've called it the formal garden in the past, but I look at that area and I'm like, oh, 
we haven't used that space for like five years mm -hmm. and we could have gotten more trees growing quicker yeah. if we had actually planted some stuff back there. So that's my only regret but is just not moving faster. There's things though, like to do that, there's a huge water thing. We have to put new water in yeah. back there. I mean, there's only so much you can do too, sure. you know, there's only so much you can tackle in a, in a year and in your budget and all of yeah. that stuff, you know, there's so many different considerations. So um, definitely projects have amped up through the years and we've done more and more it seems like every year but there's a limit there's a, yeah. a limit for everything and my brain can't handle all really? of no because i've never liked to live in the upheaval um, well that's that's part of my problem is like it's upheaval right now and you seem like you're distressed by it but don't want to move on it and i'm like let's move on it let's let's get it wrapped up and mm -hmm. let's be done with it and you're it's kind of like you're lamenting what was instead Maybe. of m making it what you want. Like, yeah, I think just if I wouldn't have, if we wouldn't have ripped anything out back there, I wouldn't even have to think about it. I'm really good at blocking stuff out, yeah. stuff I don't want to deal with, which is part of the part of the thing. The reason we did is because we trenched, yeah. you know, through that area, yeah. and that was why we it, things kind of yeah. sped up. But if so we didn't, it really wasn't your fault. You're happy about it, yeah. but it really wasn't your fault that we had to. We had to get the AC unit back there and get yeah. water back there and. All of that stuff so it needed to be trenched through hmm. whether or not you know i was kind of i was thinking it would be mostly done by now because um, i thought well we'll take that out and that'll be such an eyesore that for sure laura will like <laughs> <laughs> will design what she wants in that space i think you underestimate my ability to like dig my heels in <laughs> too and be like uh-uh well, i wasn't your ready family to do used this to space say? They used to something about like lock them down with you yeah because you were so obstinate about things yeah <laughs> oh boy it's, you know what though those kind of qualities sometimes are necessary <laughs> for what well not for projects. Uh, like maybe well standing your ground i suppose because like you're not the type of person that will get you know mowed over and i actually respect that in you and so that's good you know i'm not sure you could be with a person who could be mowed over no i don't think i could because mm -hmm. i wouldn't be able to respect them mm. so i respect somebody who can you know lock it down <laughs> I will not move. It's one of my better qualities. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway, counseling session over. <laughs> Carrie said, do you ever think about adding some landscape lighting? I can only imagine how beautiful the gardens would look at night. Perfect for a moonlight stroll. Yes. That would be awesome. It's probably something we should be thinking about in the beginning I've stages. I've made some phone calls. The problem is there's nobody in our local area that does it. I, I really kind of want someone local because I feel like it's, it's something that if installed is gonna have issues. Mm. And I'm gonna need to call someone and be like, hey, by the way, this whole bank of lights is not working in this you know, quadrant of the <laughs> garden. Um, and it's like not- like a pool light. Pool lights it, never Yeah, work. it's not something that I really wanna like spend all my time messing with. Mm -hmm. So um, I've called some places out of Boise and they don't even return calls. Mm -mm. Like you tell them where you're from Ontario, you leave a message and they don't even, you know, we're an hour from Boise and they have probably more than enough work in the Boise area. So. so for now, we use the $5 when they go on sale, Home Depot solar <laughs> yeah. lights that you just stick in the ground. They work pretty good. Yeah, they do. They don't look awesome, but they're, I don't think that they're as bright as, you know, I've, I've watched some online videos mm -hmm. of some nicer lights and they look way brighter. Mm. So I don't know. It's something I'd love to do, but I just, I need somebody to, well, like, yeah, I need somebody to come and show us how to do it, but then also be like, here's my cell phone number. Call me. Yeah call me when there's an issue that would be nice lauren said at minute 1220 what type of plant is in the front of the shot is it a sedum would anyone be able to identify which type it is i have the video right here let me go to 1220 that is a sedum it's called pure joy the really cute like really uh, lower mounding dense sedum i love it jelly bean said have you thought about creating a jack barnwell style living joint in the stone path you are creating in the south garden it would look lovely but perhaps ir irrigation would be an issue that's the only thing irrigation would be an issue we could do some sort of really low growing sedum possibly but even then it's going to need some irrigation and i'm just not sure everything is drip out there except for the grass that's out there and uh, I don't know. You would have to have a sprinkler system. You'd have to hand either hand water it with a hose, which yeah. you know, none of us want to do that. Um, or, yeah, I just. It would look cool. You know, if you If you had a sprinkler system that just um, watered it for like, you know, two minutes a day. Then you'd have hard water spots all over your stones. 
So That's there's true. that too. So you couldn't really do overhead water yeah. on, on hardscape like that. Unfortunately, that would look so neat though. I love that look. Amanda said, love all of your videos. Why not create a circle driveway slash parking in the area at the beginning of the video? I think it was that at one point. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's, you can't actually, I and mean, I could probably put a, a picture of like a drone shot, but I don't think that you could actually facilitate an actual drive in that area mm -hmm. because of the way that the half moon is. Like mm -hmm. it'd be too sharp of a turn to get back out. Mm -hmm. Well, you could blow anything out and create nude. But the other part of that is that our drain field, like our septic yeah, is right is there at the tank and the drain field. That's why, uh, so it's the jelly bean shaped grass that's closest to the Hartley. So the one on the, the north side of that garden, that is the drain field right mm -hmm. there. And so you've got to be really careful about what kind of stuff you've got there. Um, and the tank is fairly oldish. And yeah. the guy said, don't drive any heavy equipment over the top and of this we're, area. And we're in the zone where if anything goes wrong with our septic, it's like, I don't know if it's like that in most states, but in Oregon, uh, if you're within 300 feet of city services, which we are because we've got the subdivision next door to us, if your septic goes out, you have to, like your property gets annexed into the city. So if we ever need to do work on our septic, or if it ever goes out, then our taxes will go way up. Way up. You guys, county taxes versus city taxes. Is it like that everywhere? E probably. Oh, it probably most insane places. the difference. Yeah. It was like one of the, the factors why we could afford this house mm -hmm. in the beginning. Yeah, the taxes are... The yeah, so, you know, our... Well, I won't get into the details. It's... Our taxes would probably be like times three or four if we... So we're just like hoping that that city. septic tank lives yeah. forever. Yeah. Bethany said, can you divide an established hydrangea or is, or is there a better method to multiplying hydrangeas? A lot of people do it by cuttings, I think. Right? Yeah. I've never split an actual hydrangea. I, I don't think, think you do. I, th I think people have. Really? Right? I don't think that's a thing. I think that they propagate by cuttings. Probably, mo mostly, I yeah. would guess. I think I like could have sworn I saw. Something. I don't think woody um, woody shrubs are split like that. I think like perennials are. Spring hydrangea splitting from main plant. Wow. Yeah, dividing hydrangeas. There's several videos about it. Wow. I don't I don't do that, usually. Hydrangeas here. It's like a feat just to get them to live. Yeah, right. <laughs> just in there. Like their don't clump. touch it. Yeah, don't. Nobody <laughs> look at it. Nobody touch it. <laughs> Cindy said, did the hay racks go away? No, the hay racks are up in the loft in the barn, and Aaron's been dreaming up some kind of a project to do with them at some point. Yeah, well, we have so much fence line. It'd be yeah. easy to it put probably, them somewhere. It probably would be easy to put them somewhere. It'd now be, that we've done it, and we've got, like, all of the... It would be you know, colorful. Have, yes, it would be colorful. We have all the brackets and all of that stuff from that big project, so we would need to get... Some of the liners were good and we saved those, but some of them had kind of fallen apart. We used them for two, three years up mm -hmm. there. Um, so we'd have to replace a few of those and then just set up a new drip line somewhere. I think it would be easy to uh, do it on at the entrance where the, the line of trees are mm -hmm. on that fence. Like in every opening or every other? Maybe every other. So how would you run your tube to where you wouldn't see it? You could run it on the back side and just bring... Um, you could bring like a white tube up on the back side of the fence and, just, on, and have your black line all along the ground and just pop it up on the back side of the fence. And you could like tape it with some white tape or something mm -hmm. like that. So like you'd see would it. Would you do a quarter inch then? Yeah. Up from the ground. Yeah. So it's going to have to push up that far. I think we would have problems. I doubt it. I think you there's think? enough pressure. Yeah. Because the other option would be to spray paint a big long line of black poly. I think it'd be better to keep it on the ground. Maybe. And It'd be easier. For just sure. have the tubes come up. Uh -huh. I think I think the pressure would push it up. Well, you would have to though. You'd have to bring it up on a post and then take it over to the center. Would you switch it over to quarter inch with the emitter holes? Or yeah, would, probably. Yeah. So then you've got an extra four feet of yeah. line. If that didn't work, you could use all. I you know now it's just a challenge to Just leave it. To leave it to me. You know, I'll make it happen. The thing is, is that I just I'm dealing with issues in the raised beds. Yeah. From the runs of quarter inch. And yeah, I don't know. I well, mean, well, you know awesome what? You could you work. could easily do you know emitters if you needed to. Somebody needs to get come up with some white or clear poly tubing that we can use for projects. Because wouldn't that be nice? Like in a they dex sell that. They do they? Yeah. For drip? Yeah. Well, then problem solved. 
Um, I've seen it, but it might turn yellow in the sun. Mm. I wouldn't be oh, surprised. Sure. Hmm. What would you plant in them? Would it be your project? Lemon you could film a sedum. video about All it. All lemon coral sedum. <laughs> nuh -uh. No, um, you, I would probably pick, you know, something that's been done. Like, like bubble um, gum. Nah, I wouldn't do bubble gum, Serious? I don't think. But it would look nice to do like Bordeaux. Bordeaux or, would be pretty. You Bordeaux could, did great in the, you, you could do Bordeaux and Superbina Imperial Blue. Yeah, yeah. Be pretty. I don't know that you'd be able to tell the difference between the two if they were intermingling a lot. It'd just be a lot of color. It'd be, yeah, be a lot of purple. Mm-hmm. Um, Very cool. It would look nice to have some sweet potato vine coming out of them, yeah, too. Yeah, it would. Those would get huge. But they'd be able to trail down. Mm -hmm. Well, you Let's might see it. that. You next might spring. see that next year. <laughs> Patricia said, what is your biggest cost in your business? Planting, soil, compost, electricity, repairs, water, equipment, hardscape, and preparing for new projects? Payroll. Payroll? Like, <laughs> far and away. <laughs> That's our biggest it's cost. It's not even close. Yeah. We try to treat our employees as good as we possibly can and we've got more now than we ever have important yeah to the operation of what we do we couldn't do with without them and we know that yeah um so yeah but in terms of like garden stuff yeah okay so not payroll uh probably probably plants right really mm, i don't know hardscape probably contractors At this point. yeah yeah because I there's mean, after we get the big projects done, it'll probably then turn into plants. Uh -huh. But I think that one's taken a second seat to the... Yeah, I think you're right. If you if you added up Benny and Chad and um, all that stuff, mm -hmm. people coming in. Because, you know, those projects, they there's like, you know, three or four guys working on laying a brick walkway or something. Mm -hmm. And it takes them, you know, either several days or a week. Like, imagine if it was you and I doing it. Um, like, it would take us a month to get a, just, you know, one project done. And that'd be like... Every day's video would be like, all right, part 35 of this brick walkway. <laughs> that would get, like, boring really quickly. Yes, it would. I watch them, though, like when they were doing the stack stone walls, and I'm like, oh, I could do that. Yeah. And I probably would enjoy doing that. But, again, it's the time that it takes to, to do those kinds of projects right. that we just can't. Like, if we want to continue making videos to post as frequent as we do, it, it takes a lot of time to do that. Yeah. Um, but it's the same kind of thing you know, as to why we have help out here. We have Paul and Bethany out here, which, and Amy, Amy helps on the weekends. She helps water um, on the weekends. And it's just been so kind of life altering mm -hmm. to have them here because we were getting to a point where we just couldn't do it. We couldn't do the kind of consistency we're doing with um, content, with making videos um, and do all of the other work. I love to do it like this weekend. I actually don't have Amy because she's out of town. Um, and so I watered today and I loved it. I told Aaron, like, I just, it was so peaceful. And that was one of the things I used to love to do. And I do still every day, I do some of the watering. There are certain areas that just I do. Um, but I just, yeah, you can't do it all though. Mm -hmm. You have to figure out the things that somebody else could do mm -hmm. so that it frees you up to do other things. And we also want to have time to spend with our kids um, and all of that. That's not what the question was, but that's where it ended up. Yeah. Next video was last epic tour of the college plantings for 2023. It's likely we won't get back down there again, but it gave, kind of, I felt like it gave a good representation as to how the plants did over the course of the season. Um, some of them were looking tired. Some of them had bedworms, but some of them, a lot of them looked amazing. So overall really good, um, result yeah, down success. there at the college. Yeah. Um, so we walked through every single area that we planted up and just took a look at how the plants did together. Um, it was a great morning. It was cool. It was quiet. It was early, like seven o'clock, seven fifteen, seven some somewhere around in there on a Saturday morning. There was hardly anybody out. I loved it. Tara said, do you keep notes on the pairings that you loved and plants that didn't work down there at the college? Something that helps you for the next year to remember what you wanted to do. You know, I don't keep any written record, but we have our videos, which we use a lot. We refer back to those quite often. Typically, I can remember plant combinations for a year or two, like ones I didn't like and ones that I really liked. Um, so I kind of just make mental notes of those things. And occasionally, I'll cr like something from the past will crop up that I'll try again. And then I remember, oh, yeah. Yeah, that didn't work. I remember now. <laughs> Dang it. Irma said, how and how often did you fertilize this area? So we did not take care of this area. Uh, a gal named Rosa did. And I think there was maybe a couple other people helping her out because yeah. some of it's hand water and you have to do it every day. 
and Rosa can't, I mean, nobody should have to work seven days a week. So they did a great job. Um, they use a tank like we have, we like a tank that you pull behind a gator. And so you can put fertilizer in the tank with water and then water with that. It makes a, the job a lot quicker. We found along the way, like we tried an injector system, which worked okay for mm -hmm. the first little bit, but we couldn't really, like we couldn't figure out exactly how much fertilizer yeah. we were giving to the plants. We were unsure as to how much we were giving them or if we were giving them too much. Um, and then it kind of gum, like something gummed up in there. I don't really know what ended up happening. We had somebody look at it. Yeah. Anyway, we figured the best bet was to get a giant tank. We have a 150 gallon tank we can pull behind a gator and it's got its own generator now. That's had to go through some changes too. Several iterations. Yeah, I mean, you had some pieces welded on so we could have a hose link attached. Mm -hmm. Which um, is in amazing. Two different locations. Like you can either put it, you know, in front or back, right? Yeah. Um, depending on where you need to. So if you you need your hose on this side, you could, you know, lift it off and they do swivel though. Yeah. So oftentimes you don't even have to move it, but um, the generator was a new thing this year. So you don't have to plug it into a truck to have it work. Cause there's always connection issues. Yeah. Uh, and it's always, well, sometimes you, you want to hook it up to the gator. Sometimes you want to hook it up to a truck. Uh huh. So, yeah. So that's how uh, it's done on like a bigger scale, unless you can put an injector system on your whole system. Like if yeah. everything was running on the same kind of system and, you could do that, that would be awesome. Elaine said, I'm curious about those huge moms. Did you plant them when you did the original planting? I don't remember you planting those. They are going to be stunning when they bloom. Okay, so that type of mom, the perennial mom, which is the only types that my parents sell down at their garden center. They're the type you can plant in the ground and they will come back like that big, beautiful sphere that you saw. Those type of moms I can get behind. And we do have a few. So I used some in containers last year around some panicums and then uh, we pop the panicums out to plant in the landscape because oftentimes when I have perennials in pots I use them again out in the landscape and now they've got mums so they must have had mum roots left over that yeah. I, did. I didn't plant them when they had mums around them so I didn't see any plant like material on top um, but those things sprung back to life and it's like a little bouquet out in the garden around these grasses it's really cute but those are perennial mums uh, that will bloom here pretty quick and they were there when we started working on that area last year mm -hmm. i don't know how old they are um, but beautiful and the fact that they haven't flopped they must not be that old a lot of times with mums and asters you want to go in in june and kind of hack them back by about a third or a half and they'll still have time to form up their buds and all of that, but it kind of keeps their growth in check so they don't flop over. These, I'm sure, didn't get that shear. Maybe they did, but I don't seem to remember them being sheared back at any point that we looked at them. Sure. And they're this perfect, like, gorgeous sphere. Big, they're gonna be pretty. Downsprig Lane said, love the amount of potato vine. Good, <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> I was on the fence about the amount of potato vine. It did look very fresh. And like when you use foliage accents, there's no chance for them to look tired because they just, you know, are leaves. Right. There's no, you know, issues with flowers not happening and budworms and all that. The question is off topic, but I've been watching past videos and was wondering if you will have the pumpkin palooza this year or in the future. You know, we actually talked pretty seriously about bringing it back this year. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know though. I mean, there's just so many other things going on. It's possible. Um, that we could do that. It would be fun. We've talked about maybe making it a garden answer event um, and kind of growing it a little bit, maybe adding some new new things to what it was. I don't know if that would take the charm out of it. I think you could do it, but it, it would just, you, you wouldn't be able to head up the thing. Uh, you wouldn't be able to be the main person because it's so many phone calls and so many, And that's the so thing, much you work. guys, I did the pumpkin palooza by myself primarily. I'm not a committee person. I'm not a group I'm not a person who works in groups very well. I feel like they're most of the time incredibly inefficient and it takes forever to get anything done. So a lot of that, like I had help, you know, my sister would come along and help me with the project I was working on or my mom would or, you know, whoever. Um, but I was in charge of everything that happened and I made the decisions and just rolled with it. And it, it was so efficient. And I threw that whole pumpkin palooza for less than a thousand dollars out of pocket for the garden center, which was awesome and we still managed to give away a few thousand dollars to charity which was great um but yeah i just don't know i don't know how that would work out jeanette said isn't school out during the summer who gets to enjoy all that beauty they do have summer courses and things and they do a lot of, of uh, camps and things like that around and there is like there's the four rivers cultural center that's kind of attached to the college there um and it's a museum of you know the history of the area there's a japanese garden attached to that um and then there's like the um 
they do tons of meetings and events and things all around. A lot around. of stuff that happens during the yeah, summer. Yeah, it always feels like there's cars in the parking lot. And for kids some are event. coming to tour as well. Yeah. So like families are coming to check out the campus, mm -hmm. and I think that's probably important to have your campus looking as nice as possible yeah. when people are coming to. Yeah. Like, should I go to school here or not? Yeah. Uh, Simply Bloom said, everything is looking so beautiful. I have a random question. What's the difference between Proven Winners and Proven Winners Direct? I really want the Proudberry Coralberry that you have in your garden. And I, when I search it under the Proven Winners Direct, it doesn't show up. But when I Google it, I can find it under Proven Winners. I was just curious why they seem to have two different websites. That's you, Aaron. Oh, okay. <laughs> is Proven Winners Direct, is that... Um... So that's um, four, oh, four, four Star. star. Um, so Proven Winners is kind of a complicated company. It's made up... The way that they describe it, there's like partners and um, I forget what they call other people, but like they're all kind of run by different divisions. So like the shrub division is technically kind of its own company. Then there's annuals. The perennial division is its own company, but they all come together under the same umbrella that is Proven Winners. So anyway, <clears throat> there's there's several owners of Proven Winners and one of them. Not several, right? There's just a couple. Well, depends on how you look at it. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know how they just describe partners and owners, but I know there's at least two owners and then maybe the rest are partners. And there could be like four or five other, you know, of the partners. Mm -hmm. But uh, one of the owners who owns Four Star in Michigan and we've toured it before. Mm -hmm. And his website is like their website is Proven Winners Direct. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of weird because it's almost like they're in competition with ProvenWinners.com which is like represents all of Proven Winners. Mm -hmm. I don't really understand how that works, but... Um, You'll get a good plant no matter where you order it from, yeah. you know? I, so, think, I think that Home Depot uh, fulfills the orders through Proven Winners Direct. Or do I have that backwards, that if you order from Home Depot, it's Proven Winners Direct that fulfills, fulfills it. it? I think so. Yeah, that's yeah. the way it is. And then if you order ProvenWinners.com, it comes from Garden Crossings. Yeah. That Adam. comes from Rod and Heidi. Yeah. Uh, Which they're also they're in Michigan. Awesome people, you guys. Yeah, they're super um, nice. They all are. Uh, anyway. So we're con we are connected with ProvenWinners.com. We're in a, like a roundabout way. We're connected. Like we know Tom, you know, the, the mm -hmm. owner of Proven Winners Direct. But it's kind of, it's super convoluted. Right. I, I honestly, I kind of wish that they wouldn't. There wouldn't be multiple websites because it is kind of confusing, is confusing for a consumer. Mm -hmm. But I also understand that things just get kind of messy when there's a lot of owners and partners and who gets to do what. And everybody's just trying to run their own business and be profitable. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, I get that part of it, too. You're so much better at explaining that than I am. I still feel like the way I explained that was like... No, I just, would have been all over the place. So and also, great. I reserve the right to be wrong on anything that I'm saying. Don't me too. Don't quote me <laughs> on any of that stuff. That's just 100% my opinion. <laughs> Okay, moving on to the last video for this week's recap, which was moving two huge concrete urns and planting roses slash asters. This is where the asters come in. So we moved the two urns on the pedestals that were back in the north garden is what we're calling it, uh, where the big circle boxwoods are. We got those moved and out of the way because we are going to be removing all of that grass. And we're not even removing it. We're just going to put cardboard on top and do the no dig fig thing because it's worked so well yeah. for us. Like so well. Like weeds. Have you noticed any weeds coming up? A little bit, but not, not a lot. I mean, almost none. Yeah, compared to like when you are seeding new grass somewhere or you, you know, you take the grass up somewhere and start a new flower bed, there's always a huge crop of weeds that come up. So we've been really impressed with that method. So um, we got the urns moved, which was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. And then I planted some um, Alnwick rose, roses and some asters. Munch, monk, monk. It's spelled M. O N C H, Munch. 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 But I looked online. On I looked up how to pronounce it, and I still can't really do it oh. right. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, Zanny Zanny Laney said, "With your no dig area in the north garden, how do you handle the sprinklers? I've been wanting to create more planting areas in my yard via no dig method, but keep putting it off because I don't know if I have to move the sprinklers first or if I can let the area take shape with no dig and then move sprinklers later." I probably move them before. You would you not want to move the sprinklers after because right. you, you'd if have to cut the cardboard all that stuff. hasn't broken down yet, yeah. which 
it might take a whole year to even break down. Well, you wouldn't even really be able to use your sprinkler unless you really tapered that stuff down too, because yeah. it would be buried. You have to do a pretty good size layer. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it in an area with sprinklers. So back there, and we've actually let like patches of grass completely dead back there um, because we just have kept a lot of, of sprinklers and a lot of water back there because we know we're not going to use it. We have to put in new sprinklers. So as soon as the boxwood circle is gone and we remove the other urn and the fountain base, um, we are going to mark out where we want our walkways or our grass pathways to be. So they'll look much like the South Garden pathways, but a little bit more narrow. We'll mark where that needs to be. And then Benny will come in and put in the sprinkler system to match the pathways. Then we will do the no dig around it. Um, so it's kind of the process we're hoping for. And hopefully we get that done this fall. Yeah. So back, back there, I think we probably either we or Chad, um, cause Chad's probably going to pull out all the box was back mm -hmm. there. We'll probably just have him pull out the grass at the same time with the skid you think steer. So? Yeah, because it'll be it so out. quick for him just to scrape it all That's out. True. I, all I could see was a sod lifter. I have used a sod lifter so many times. Yeah. And I would really love if I never had to put my fingers on a sod lifter ever again in my life. I don't think we probably ever will. Oh. Because we can, we can either scrape stuff up with the tractor. Or do the cardboard. I mean, you use a sod lifter if you're wanting to save the grass and move it somewhere else, which in which case it's that's really convenient. Which is but. what we did. Every time we lifted grass, there were people that came and got yeah, it. Yeah, we always gave it away. Yeah. Oh, I just think back to those times, though. That is such hard work. I mean, sod lifter is easier than doing it with a shovel, but yeah. still. Oh. Uh, JE860 said, did I miss this month's garden tour or is it not out yet? Not out we, yet. Not out yet. I haven't really been thinking about it much. Maybe that's what we can do when the patio furniture comes. We'll uh -huh. just do a garden tour at that time. Sounds good. BU said, very excited for you with developments in your north garden and the area around the Hartley. Out of curiosity, could you repurpose the boxwoods in your Hartley formal design garden? Or does that require a different type of boxwood or hedge? Uh, you know, we are using the, the boxwood variety back there is Winter Gem. And we are using Winter Gems in this area that connects to the fireplace. Around the Hartley, I'm using green velvets primarily. Um, the ones back there, though, if you actually get really close in on them, they're not that nice. They look nice on the outside and they look healthy on the outside, but they are pretty dead and yellow on the insides and they've been growing together for so long. I think if we tried to pull them apart, you would see green on the outer edges. Mm. And, and I think you're supposed to uh, trim hedging a little bit differently, like kind of trim out some so there's air and light flow and stuff like that. And these have just been kind of left to be like super, super duper thick. And so eventually the interior, like they shade themselves out and the, the middle section's pretty hollowed out. And I think that's what we would find. The ones that face the barn actually have some dead showing through the sides too. So the closer I get uh, to them, the more I'm kind of like, no, it's okay. Mm -hmm. It's okay that these go because I think eventually they would start to. Are you okay with the corner uh, area going as well? Yeah, it needs to go. Those boxwoods have been struggling for almost since we, since we moved, moved, in. moved moved in, and there's some areas that they were providing nice structure. You know, if mm -hmm. I just kind of like cross my eyes and look at them, yeah, you know, it's like, oh, that's a nice area. Yeah, <laughs> side eye them as don't you go look by. Too close. Just don't look too close. And I'm tired of doing that, you yeah. know. And I think this season too, with the spider mite issues we've had in the heat, um, it's brought out kind of the glaring issues, which is maybe a good thing. It's maybe a good thing that I didn't get around to to trimming all of the boxwoods this spring as well because now at this point I'm like, oh, I just don't even want to look at it. <laughs> just like this kind of gnarly mess at the moment. So I think it will be good to clear it out. And that usually for me, I'm a blank, I do better with a blank slate sometimes um, because sometimes I can't see past what's already there, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like the driveway or the gravel area around that triangle section in the driveway. It's hard for me to imagine that being garden. That's why you got to rip it out. Just wait for every opportunity where you can say that. <laughs> Carly said, can you ask Proven Winners to up their game in England? I can rarely ever see any Proven Winners plans. I'll get right on that. <laughs> Jamie said, how deep is the new bed against the fence where you're planting all the trees? Well, it's going to be a lot deeper than it currently is because all of it except for this like 10 foot grass pathway through there will all be planting bed. So, so it on. started off being like three feet? Three feet. If that yeah, and we extended it well you kind of made it wavy but that's not going to be no i only did that for the is. time being yeah. just because like we didn't have any other thing going on back there and um, so in the end it'll maybe be like 15 20 feet deep and maybe deeper or in some more spots. in some places mm -hmm. and then maybe a little bit more narrow in other spots you know because the grass pathway is going to curve through there yeah. 
a little bit. Um, but yeah, the whole area will be planting area. It's going to use a heck of a lot less water back there, actually, yep. because we don't have grass uh, or as much grass. And then I've been thinking, and I kind of shared in the, that video, of maybe a pond in the back corner. I think we can make that work. As long as we have like an evergreen block behind yeah. that. So maybe we work on that first and yeah. kind of get like a border established and then we decide if that's the best spot for yeah. a pond. I just think it'd be nice because it's close enough to the house, you'll still see it. Right. You know, and you'll be able to maybe hear whatever water feature from the, the greenhouse and from where we're sitting right here. That'd be quite nice. Yeah. And this is the last question for today. Nicholas says, I remember you saying you were family friends with the previous owners. Did they stay up to date with your changes to the property? If so, what have they said or felt about the changes? We've made major changes to our property over the years, and our neighbors keep the previous owners up to date on what we've done. We've had positive feedback from them so far. They've driven through a few times. Mm -hmm. They actually, they moved, they're kind of back and forth. They're kind of here in this area, but they moved to Mississippi. Um, and they keep really close tabs with my parents they you know they travel together and um, they've been really good friends with them for a lot a lot of years um did they drive through this summer i think they did earlier this season um they knew when we when we bought the house i think they were kind of glad because they knew they needed to make some major changes out here they knew the elm trees needed to come out they knew the privet hedging um, needed to come out and that was a huge part of the infrastructure around this house and so he had 100 boxwoods he had ordered um, come in. 100 boxwoods. Now yeah. we look at that and we're like, well, that'll do one small section. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he had ordered 100 boxwoods in preparation to start ripping out some of the privets um, previous to. So he ordered those in the winter time because if you want to, like, that's a big amount of boxwoods. Yeah. If you want that amount of boxwoods, uh, you need to special order them. Otherwise, we don't order in 105 gallon boxwoods, you know, of a specific variety typically. Well, winter gems we do sprinters we do um anyway so we ordered them and we didn't tell them about needing to buy a house until like february mm -hmm. i guess so we'd ordered them and then we bought the house like later that winter early spring and he went ahead with the house they bought nearby they took the boxwoods i kind of was like can the boxwoods come with the house yeah. <laughs> but they used them at their new garden and i remember the first time they came through do you see what does that squirrel have aaron's huge what does that squirrel have a whole sunflower head I'm so excited to see a squirrel in our garden. So we had a lot of squirrels, more squirrels, when we had the oak hedge. And then when we took the oaks out, they just go to our neighbor's house. Our neighbors have a huge amount of trees. And now I'm starting to see a little bit of squirrel activity. And I think that one was carrying a great big sunflower head off of a sunflower that's nearby. I could just sit out here forever and just watch the little animals <laughs> run around in the garden. I love it. My parents actually had a big turtle in their driveway. Yeah. This week, like a 12 inch, like a big. And there big are turtle. not really any bodies of water near them. No. That's weird. It's super weird, and I'm glad they saw it. It was behind the car. My, they were going to my mom's appointment for her leg, and uh, my dad was putting the scooter, her little knee scooter yeah. thing, into the back, and he just looked down, and there's this turtle on their driveway. How weird. Yeah. There's ditches and stuff like that, but, yeah. and I guess other people say that like around, there's a park here in town that has a big pond and they say that there's turtles that live down there. Hmm. I've just have never seen one like in the wild before. <laughs> anyway, guys, that is it for today's recap video. What a wonderful, like, oh, time being out here. It's so beautiful. We'll probably try to do these outside for as long as we can before it gets too cold. Hope you guys are all having a great day. Have a great week and we will see you in the next video.